So today's mission is to learn everything there is to know about the Tesla Model 3. To be honest, I know nothing about this car. We just got it, but we're gonna learn together. So. Let's do this. First of all, how do you get in the car? You don't get one of these traditional key fobs. You only get this, which you press against the door and that unlocks the car. But one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is program your phone to be one of the keys. I don't have to pull out the app and unlock it manually. It just detects that I am near the car and unlocks for me. And then when I'm done driving, I get out of the car, walk away, and the car will automatically detect that I have walked away and lock automatically. All four doorknobs are flush, so you press on the thicker part of the handle and then opens up like that. Do you know the average steering wheel has four times more germs than an average toilet seat? So, ew. But one of the first things I had to get over is like, okay, how do you turn the car on and off? Like any other car, you get in, you turn it on, the engine starts running, then you can drive, and then when you're done, you have to shut it off or else you're gonna leave the engine running all night. Here you don't really do that. You literally get in, put it into drive, and start going. And then when you're done, you put it into park, get out of the car, and walk away. The car knows when you're in it or not, and then just shuts off the car for you accordingly. Remember, this car is really smart. It knows when you're in the car, when you're not in the car, and it's awesome. So far, I've never had to pull out anything from my pockets or anything. I literally walk up to the car, get in, start driving, and then I leave. I don't have to use any extra tool. So that becomes really cool once you get used to it. They do suggest holding onto this car at all times in case your phone dies or you wanna valet the car. Now, if you get in with the key card, you have 30 seconds to get in and you can start up the car right away. But if it passes that 30 seconds, all you gotta do is take this, throw this right here. And that's kinda like putting the key in the ignition. So with that there, I just press on the brake. And if I press this down, it will go into drive. Or if I pull it up, it goes into reverse. And then you just hit the gas pedal and you're off. I guess it's not a gas pedal anymore, huh? Like an accelerator pedal, because there is no gas, right? What do you call these? And then you just press in that button to get it back into park. Now, most cars have an emergency brake or handbrake. This does not require it. As soon as you put it into park, all four wheels lock up. So you're good. The left column is pretty standard. You got your turn signals left and right. You pull it in towards you for temporary high beams. You push it away from you and I have mine set to automatic high beams. Now to get out of the car is this button right here so you press it the window rolls down slightly and the door opens now there is also this manual lever down here it's like an emergency latch in case your car battery dies or it stops working for whatever reason but it's really meant for emergencies only because it doesn't roll down that window that little bit and could damage it I do love how simple the whole interior of this car is I mean usually where the speedometer is is just this air vent and then we have our tinted sunroof up here and also another one that goes all the way to the back of the car like look at this shot here usually I don't like filming the interiors of cars because it's just like bleh. but this looks nice some of you guys have called it a built-in ND filter love it your entire dashboard's pretty much replaced by this massive iPad looking thing on the dash your speedometer your menus everything is here the only button that I really see aside from what's on the steering column is this hazard right here even the owner's manual is built into this touchscreen and even opening this glove box no latch or anything for that it's a button right here and that opens that right back up oh we got some napkins from Chipotle now like I said I don't want to just kind of know this car I want to become an expert so I'm going to literally sit here and read through the entire owner's manual right now. So apparently the Model 3 supports up to 19 keys, which can include authenticated phones, key cards, and up to four key fobs. So I guess if you really want to have a key fob and like having crap in your pocket, you can get one. And it also looks like a miniature Model 3. That is adorable. But honestly, with the phone being the key, it's been so simple that I not even considering it. Now you can see all the authenticated keys inside of the car. So in case you lose one of the key cards or anything like that, you can always remove access. So right now the two keys that are recognized is my phone and also my key card that I have right here. To open the trunk, you can use the open button on the touch screen. You can also open it through the key fob if you decide to get that. There's also a button on the trunk, which is pretty much what I use every time. And you could also use it through the app. Now it's starting to rain. It's asking me to update the software in the car itself. And yeah, these cars just get random updates. And this one says I'm gonna get 5% more power. Yes, please, let's install this and then uh, let's come back. All right, weather has cleared for now. So that's good news. Let's look at this trunk. It's pretty spacious. I can totally fit in here, no problem. Actually, I feel like two people can fit in here. Another person could lay right here. And as usual, you have the glow in the dark release latch. So if you were thinking about trapping people in here, you're not gonna have much luck. 
there you go. See, two, two people and a dog. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm feeling very uncomfortable. This is great. The mafia is totally watching this and being like, I told you the Model 3 would work. <laughs> oh, hi, Peter. Where's your collar? Why are you so naked? She's well, she's a streaker. I really appreciate it, my girlfriend because she's like one of the only people that I can go inside and be like, hey, I want to see if we can both fit at the trunk at the same time. And she was like, oh yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we got some WeatherTech floor mats for the trunk. But you could also have a second compartment down here, which apparently you're allowed to put more weight. This is the weight that they suggest for putting stuff on the top shelf. If you're carrying a giant ball of steel for whatever reason, throw it down here. This has a higher weight capacity. This is a nice size for like a duffel bag, not easily accessible. So maybe like an emergency kit or anything like that, which I actually just realized now that this car does not come with a spare tire. What? And apparently that's kind of the new norm is just not having a spare tire on cars. But what do you do if you get a flat tire out in the middle of nowhere with no phone reception? I mean, the tires do have those sensors, so it is always monitoring your tire pressure. So I'm sure it'll tell you if your tires are getting low or whatever, but spare tires have gotten me out of a lot of jams. So I would honestly feel a lot more comfortable with one. I've seen some for sale, but I don't know if there's a great place to store it. Cause usually it would go right here, right? But the shape of it, it doesn't really seem like you'll fit a spare at all. So that is one thing I do wish it had was like some sort of cavity for a spare tire. Now the back seat's decently comfortable. I'm five eight, so that's not saying much coming from me, but you get your own sunroof, so that's cool. Cup holders drop down in the center. Oh, look at this, USB ports back here, I guess in case you wanna charge some stuff and also some air vents. Everything else seems pretty standard. You just touch these lights to adjust and whoa! Okay, you know how there's hooks for clothes or whatever usually back here? This one feels nice. Like the way it presses in, it's the little things that's impressive, but it just, it feels so good to press this thing and have this thing come out. Now, one of the weird things that I usually end up doing at some point or another is sleeping in my car. So when you fold down the back seats, you have full access to the trunk, which is awesome. I hate it when cars have just like a little tiny window so you can't really access the trunk and it's pretty flat. So it's actually really comfortable. And you have this epic view right above you with the sunroof. So it's kind of nice, actually. I could totally do this. Now, like I said, I am 5'8". I think even if you were 5'10", you could probably still do this. If you're like over six feet, then your head might start hanging off the edge here. Another nice thing about having an electric car is that you can leave the air conditioning on or heater. It'll last a pretty long time. Most other cars where, you know, you have to have the engine running the whole time to leave your air conditioning on or else your battery will die. Well, this has a massive battery, so it's cool. And in case you need more storage, there's the front, which you can open through this touch screen here or the app, or if you're extra fancy and have that key fob. But since there's no button or latch here, I probably won't be using it as often. And it's not a ton of space, but you're less regularly accessed items. Like we keep our charger here. The tow eye is in here and also a button for emergency escape. Although you would have to be a really small person to fit in here. Now they say you can open this thing to attach the tow eye or to attach an external battery in case the battery on the car dies. They said press up here and do something. Yeah, I think I need to look it up before I damage it. <laughs> Let me just wait for this to pass though. All right, so they recommend using a tool for this, but you press on the top right corner and then that kind of pulls this bottom part open and you just pry it a little bit. There we go. And this tow eye can just go straight onto there. Oh man, I just spent like the last five minutes trying to screw this in, but it's reverse threaded. So lefty tighty this time. And this will get you out if you're having too much fun in the mud or snow. Good to know. Let's latch this back in. And they say when you close this, you don't want to put all the pressure right on the Tesla logo. You want to put your hands right here and press down firmly like that. Now the center console definitely feels really nice. It's one of those things that you kind of have to touch it and feel it to know what I'm talking about, but it just 
feels really elegant. It's so smooth. I have a USB drive plugged into here for sentry mode. So whenever things happen around the car, it gets recorded with the car's camera and dumps into this drive right here. And this is kind of like your phone rack here. So you can rest that there and there's another cover for it. So it's a couple layers. But I guess if we want to charge our phones, we can plug that into here. And then I guess we can take off this mat, which exposes this little contraption. And I it says we can push this to the side. Ooh, okay. So we feed this cable through here and then bring it out right here, I guess. Clip this back on. Now we have a clean little place to charge our phone. It does kind of feel a little bit cumbersome trying to squeeze this phone into there, but turns out that Tesla actually makes their own charging cable. So that should fit in there nicely and then you can probably just dock your phone a little bit easier. So that's probably something I'm gonna have to order. You know what actually looks a lot better is the Model 3 wireless phone charger. It's 125 bucks. I mean, there's a lot of compartments in this thing. I mean, aside from this, you have your cup holders and then a center console you got a little tray for your little things and more space underneath here man i feel like we covered a lot but we're still just getting started with this instruction manual this might be a long video i guess we'll keep going to learn about safety and seating so correct driving position it's like this if you don't look like this while you're driving you're doing something wrong how to adjust your seat blah 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 okay i think this is all pretty standard you got your typical tilt and you got your forward back and it's got all the different little sections that you can adjust you know how like you can raise up your butt to feel a little bit taller and your thigh area also and this circle is lumbar support oh that feels interesting. <laughs> There's something moving around back here. I'm not sure exactly where I'm supposed to set it, but uh, you can. <laughs> what is nice is when you find your seating position, you can save it as your profile. So whenever you get in the car, you just tap on your name and everything will adjust to where you left it. The headrests are not adjustable. The center rear seat includes an adjustable head support that can be raised, lower, or removed. So to remove it, there's this little slot here. Stick a screwdriver in there, get to go. Yeah, this is a deep dive, fellas. We're gonna learn everything there is to know about this car. It also says don't use seat covers in the Model 3. Doing so can restrict deployment of the seat mounted side airbags if a collision occurs. Seat belts, blah, blah, blah. We all know how to put them on. We should always be buckled up, yes. What's interesting is it knows when someone in the back seat isn't wearing a seat belt either. Either. But during the times where you're transporting something in the back seat or whatever and shouldn't have a seat belt, then you can mute that. So good to know there. Oh, this is getting so in depth. How to release a seat belt. You press the button. We know this part. There's like 85 paragraphs of warnings to always use your seat belt. We get it. Also a whole bunch of stuff about child safety seats, something I don't have to worry about yet. There's a whole bunch of airbags in this thing. This is telling me about the type of airbags and the purpose of airbags. But this is a great photo of how not to sit when an airbag is deployed. Oh, this is cool, something I didn't know, is that you can assign the driver profile to one of the keys. Because every time I get in the car after Carrie drives it, I manually go and adjust it, but this will make it so the car will adjust it without me having to do that. So under locks, I can can hit that and now I am assigned to it. So let's test this out. I'm gonna mess up all my settings here, the seat position, all that, and let's see what happens when I walk up to the car and open it. <gasps> it's working! It detects my phone and sets everything for me. My steering column, my seat, my mirrors. Oh, this is just, ah! So that's actually cool. See, reading the manual sometimes can be worth it. Under the driver profiles, there's also a valet mode and that kind of limits the power on the car so they can't go joyrided too crazy. It also hides your home and work locations, cuts out autopilot. They can't manage your keys, your frunk and glove box are locked. So that's nice and thoughtful. Like all the stuff that they shouldn't have access to, they don't. You'll set up a four digit pin number and they can't get out of valet mode without that pin. On the steering wheel you have these two little knobs here left side is mostly for audio so volume up down you can also click it to mute left or right for next song or last song and the right side is more for cruise control slash autopilot you can use that to change your cruise control speed and also how much distance you want from the car in front of you so those are the two things that you have access right there as well as the horn if the touchscreen becomes unresponsive you can hold down 
these two buttons for 30 seconds and that will restart the screen. And what's awesome is you can adjust how the steering feels. So there's comfort, which makes it very easy to turn. And then you have your nice basic standard and then sport, which kind of gives you a little bit more resistance as you're going through higher speeds. That's pretty sweet to be able to adjust these things. And you feel it too. Oh, and you could also position your steering wheel using this left knob, the one that we usually use for volume, but it can retract or telescope. That is also something that is saved to your profile. So I'm gonna set it back. And same thing with the mirrors, you adjust those. The mirrors electronically fold, so convenience. And if you need a power cycle the entire car, you can actually go into power off, wait at least two minutes without interacting with the vehicle. So don't open the door, just touch the brake pedals, nothing. And after two minutes, press the brake pedal or open the door to wake the vehicle back up. And that's kind of like just rebooting the car, which is weird, rebooting the car. What a weird concept. There's <laughs> of course automatic headlights. So when it's dark, it turns on automatically. That's pretty standard, but it also has automatic high beams. You turn it on, and it only turns on when there's no lights in front of you. So if they see a car driving towards you, then it automatically switches to low beam. And also auto windshield wipers. It's starting to trickle down again. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna pop it into drive and we'll see if it turns on. Oh, it automatically did, yeah. So that's pretty cool. I wonder how it senses the water. If I put a bunch of water on there, will it wipe fast? Let's try. <laughs> huh. Oh my God, that was a bad idea. Did you see that? Oh, that water just went straight in. Oh, damn it. So the auto windshield wipers works. How to maximize range. You wanna generally drive slower and avoid frequent and rapid accelerations, just like how you would in a normal car. Fully raise all windows, limit the use of resources such as heating, lights, and air conditioning. Using seat heaters to keep warm is more efficient than heating the cabin. Okay, good to know. By the way, there's a seat heater in every single one of these seats including the rear seats and including the middle seat too that I thought was interesting. Also set stopping mode to hold to gain the benefit of regenerative braking at low driving speeds. That is one of the first things that you will notice when you first drive this is that when you let off on the gas, it starts to brake on its own. So most of the driving you could actually do without ever touching the brake, which is also supposed to help save you from wearing out your brakes as often. And that basically consistently gives you regenerative braking. So every time you come to a stop, it's recharging your battery. So one of the things I noticed is that, you know, every Every time you're at a stoplight or anything, you usually have to hold on to the brake. But on hold mode, as soon as you're stopped, the car basically stays there. But you could also switch it to creep mode. So when you're close to or at a complete stop, the motor continuously applies torque. So it kind of moves the car a little bit forward slowly, just like a traditional automatic transmission. So it'll move forward unless you're pressing on the brake. And then there's also roll. So when you're at a complete stop, the Model 3 becomes free rolling like a vehicle in neutral. Therefore, if stopped on a slope, the Model 3 will roll downwards and the brake does not engage. Kind of want to try these real quick. So I'm going to start off in creep mode here. <laughs> I'm a creep. Yeah, so now it drives very much like a regular car. If I take my foot off the brake, it automatically starts to roll forward. Well, so I just turned on the setting for full self-driving visualization preview and it essentially tells you a little bit more of what the car is seeing and it's actually pretty impressive. It's recognizing all these garbage bins because it's trash day today. Now when I'm driving, there is a dash cam. The front facing camera is recording and saved onto that USB drive that I have on there. And that's always awesome to have in case you get in an accident or something. So basically you just have to get your own USB stick, format it a certain way and stick it in there and it records. There's all also a pedestrian warning system that makes the Model 3 make a sound when driving below 20 miles per hour. So that sound is designed to let pedestrians know that a car is coming because an electric vehicle operates so quietly. So I didn't know that, that's a safety thing. I actually thought it was the sound of the motors or battery or something, I don't know. But yeah, it's a sound design for pedestrians. There's some best practices for if you're living in some really cold weather, kind of warming up the battery before you take off, like from the App, you can turn on climate control that will heat up the cabin as well as the battery a little bit. When your battery is cold, this little blue snowflake icon might come up when you're still warming up the battery. That's gonna limit the amount of power you have during that time. They say one of the things that can lock up is your door handle. So if you're living in a cold place and that's constantly freezing, they suggest you throw some WD-40 into there. Not gonna lie, I didn't expect it to take this long to get through the manual. I mean, there is just so much in here. 
All right, we're getting through it though. We're getting through it. Now there's basically a ton of different sensors and cameras all over this thing. So they recommend once in a while going in and just wiping it down if you use the autopilot feature very often. So there's traffic aware cruise control. And they also said some of these features may not be available right when you buy it. It needs to drive a little bit to calibrate the cameras to make sure it knows exactly where everything is and usually completes after about 20 to 25 miles. So if you literally just bought the car today and you're like, why isn't it working? That might be the reason why. So now let's get into the cruise control. You enter it by driving a certain speed. And just like any other cruise control, let's say you're driving 50 miles per hour you press this down once and it will enter cruise control and then to adjust your cruise control speed you can just roll this wheel right here and at any point you can step on the gas and manually go faster than your set cruise control so you might do that when you're passing a car and then you can let off the gas and it will go back slow down to that cruise control speed and continue there but then if you hit the brake just like any other cruise control it will cancel so that was traffic aware cruise control now next is auto steer so if you're driving on the road and you see this little icon pop up on the screen it's a steering wheel that means auto steer is available so then instead of tapping this down once you double tap it and as long as the car recognizes the lanes it will enter auto steer auto steer is not designed to and will not steer model 3 around objects partially or completely in the driving lane so pay attention in front of you at all times so even though a lot of people like to just completely take their hands off the wheel you're not supposed to do that and it is constantly checking to see if you're holding onto the steering wheel by seeing if there's a little bit of pressure and if it doesn't detect you at all for a little while it'll ask you to just nudge the steering wheel a little bit just so it's like oh, okay you're still there paying attention. I think what they just don't want is people just going to the back seat and taking a nap. <laughs> to get out of auto steering, you can just turn a little bit extra hard. Like if you decide to force it in a direction, it doesn't take too much pressure and you'll be out of it. You can also press the brake or press this lever up. That will also exit it. It will also hop out of auto steer if you go over 90 miles per hour or an automatic emergency braking event occurs. And when you're in auto steer, if you want to change lanes or something, you just simply turn on the turn signal and you just wait for the car to find a clearing and it'll do it for you. We were pretty terrified the first couple times we tried it, but it's pretty good. And then there's summon. So through your phone, you can either have the car creep forward or creep backwards. It dodges everything using its sensors. And there's also smart summon. So that kind of navigates its way through private property to come pick you up. It's pretty slow. It's not a feature I see myself using all the time, but it's definitely cool when you see this thing driving itself on its its own. <laughs> There's also lane assist. It checks your blind spot. There's also lane departure avoidance when you're driving between 40 to 90 miles per hour. And if you start veering off into a lane next to you when a car is in your blind spot, you can either have it off so nothing happens or you could set it to warning where your steering wheel will vibrate, kind of letting you know to pay attention. And then there's assist, which will nudge you back in your lane and vibrate, letting you know that there's a car right there, dude. It also accounts the adjacent lane speed, which is actually pretty cool if the lane next to you is going significantly slower than you it's never a good idea to go that fast because if someone merges out then you're not going to have as much time to respond to it this car will adjust accordingly to be a bit safer but you could always override that by pressing the accelerator pedal and of course a whole bunch of warnings saying that this is just an assistance tool you are still responsible to check your own blind spot and all that so don't fully rely on it yet of course also the ford collision warning that a lot of cars had so the forward looking cameras is always monitoring in front of you for cars motorcycles bicycles or pedestrians and then if you have automatic emergency braking enabled then it will automatically slam on the brakes for you so you don't hit whatever's in front of you so that's nice it's always going to be a lot harder to accidentally rear end somebody so the emergency brake does not apply the brakes when you turn the steering wheel sharply or you accelerate hard while the braking thing is being applied or you press and release the brake pedal while it's doing the braking and then there's things like obstacle aware acceleration so you turn off all your safety features and you drive straight into a garage or something it limits the amount of torque that you have to limit the amount of damage that's done there's also a speed limit warning which is actually really nice considering how easy it is to go really fast in this car 
A lot of times I'm going 60 and I feel like I'm going 30. So this is actually useful here. <laughs> For speed limit warning, you can have it off, display, or chime. And this works whenever the map knows what the speed limit is. I'm gonna set mine to chime, so make a sound letting me know, hey, slow down a little bit, <laughs> you're gonna get a ticket. And then you can choose between relative and absolute. So I'm gonna probably keep mine on relative and I'm gonna set my offset to 10 miles per hour. So basically the chime will only come on if I'm going over 10 miles past the speed limit. If I have it at zero, it'll probably chime all the time. And then there's absolute that you could set to, I don't know, 50, 70, 80 miles per hour, and it'll always chime whenever it hits that speed. But I think relative is gonna be much more useful for me at least. Oh man, it is 324. I started filming this video at 10. I've been in this car for five hours reading this manual. <laughs> you think this video is ridiculously long? Well, try sitting in the car and reading all this. This is extensive. The Model 3 also has a air filter that prevents pollen, industrial fallout, road dust, and other particles from entering through the vents. Tesla recommends changing this out every two years. And then there's also cabin overheat protection, which might be actually kind of nice, especially if you leave a camera gear in your car or anything like that. If it gets over 105 degrees Fahrenheit in here, climate control will automatically turn on and cool it back down. All right, so let's learn about charging. So that's your front motor. That's the rear motor. This whole big thing on the bottom is a giant battery. And then that's your cabin heater. That's your air conditioning. That's your high voltage cabling. That's your charging port right there. And this is like a battery service panel. It's interesting because it looks nothing like a traditional combustion engine car. <laughs> giant battery motor on the front and the back. What's, what are we looking at here? So the battery on the Model 3 has one of the most sophisticated battery systems in the world. Okay, the most important way to preserve the battery is to leave your vehicle plugged in when you are not using it. This is particularly important if you are not planning to drive your Model 3 for several weeks. Oh, that's interesting. So when plugged in, the Model 3 wakes up when needed to automatically maintain a charge level that maximizes the lifetime of the battery. When left idle and unplugged, your vehicle periodically uses energy from the battery for system tests and recharging the 12 volt battery when necessary. There is no advantage to waiting until the battery's level is low before charging. In fact, the battery performs best when charged regularly. Well, that's actually good to know. I probably would have left it unplugged if I were going to leave for a couple weeks or something like that. But now we know, keep it plugged in even when we're not using it. Now the peak charging rate of these batteries may decrease slightly after a large number of DC fast charging sessions, such as those at superchargers. The battery charge rate is decreased when the battery is too cold or when the battery's charge is nearly full, but this is all automated so you don't have to think about it. Never allow the battery to fully discharge, even when Model 3 is not being driven. The Model 3 does discharge very slowly to power the onboard electricity. Electronics, the battery can discharge at a rate of approximately 1% per day, though that discharge rate may vary depending on environmental factors such as cold weather. For those times where you have to leave the car unattended and you can't plug it in, just keep that 1% a day in mind. So if you're gonna leave for two weeks, that's 14 days, make sure you have enough charge to stay above that 14% charge. Discharging the battery to 0% may result in damage to vehicle components. So to protect against that, when the battery goes to zero, it enters low power consumption mode. So when that happens, immediately plug in the Model 3. Now let's charge this thing up. Now we actually have the slowest charger, the one that comes with the car, and you could just plug it into a standard household socket. It's not super fast, but it's also not terrible. A couple ways to open the charging port, but my favorite way with this charging cable is you just kind of put this nearby the charging port, you press it, it automatically automatically opens up. There's a button on here. And then that's a blue light that's just saying, hey, I'm ready. Plug it in, it'll flash for a second, just getting everything connected. And then once it turns into a flashing green, that means it's charging. Once it's a solid green, then it's fully charged. And the red light is the one you don't wanna see. It means there's something going wrong. Now when it's charging, this stays locked in to prevent anyone from pulling it out unauthorized. So to take it out, the car needs to either be unlocked or you have your phone nearby and then you press the button again, it releases and we're good. And then just give it a second and it'll close on its own. Another way to open it when the car's unlocked or you have your phone with you, is you can actually press on the bottom of it and that will pop it open as well. Now for some reason, 
reason, I'm not 100% sure why, if you're charging this in under 41 degree Fahrenheit weather, so pretty cold weather, and it's fully charged, this does not stay locked, so you can pull it out. And I guess in some circumstances, if this thing will not unlock and you can't get it out, there's this little pull tab inside the trunk where if you pull it, it will manually release it. I don't think it's something that you'll need to use very often, but here we are in the trunk and there's a little ring right there. You pull it and that's how you do it. Now it is charging right now. It should automatically detect how much power it can draw from the outlet and automatically set it to the high end. But you can also set the cap of how far you want the battery to charge. And they recommend keeping it within this daily range right here. You can top it off a little bit higher, but that puts a little bit of extra stress on your battery. So you probably only really want to use it during a extended trip but I usually just leave mine right there that right there is how many miles I currently have on this charge and also the time remaining is three hours and 30 minutes until I hit my point right there but if I change it to the full charge then this will jump to 10 hours and 40 minutes you can drop this current charge but I generally keep that circuit pretty clear so I just leave mine at 12. I was charging at about three miles per hour that tends to fluctuate depending on you know how long it's been charging and how full the battery is. A lot of times I can average out to about four, sometimes five miles an hour. So with a regular household outlet, I'm usually getting like 40, 50 miles a night on a charge. Now by default, it just charges whenever you plug it in, but you could also do some scheduling so you could have it start at a certain time or also set your departure time. Basically, you just wanna have it charge off peak hours because electricity is more expensive in the middle of the day. So, you know, if you wanna start it at midnight, then you'll probably be fine. Or you could also do depart at, so if you know you're going to be leaving at 6 a.m. every morning then you can say all week start at 6 a.m. so basically it'll take into account how long it's going to take to charge and also try to pull the charge at the less expensive times and also it turns on climate control so this would be awesome for Carrie when she goes back to work so we can leave this at 6 a.m. every morning she comes out to the car it's charged ready to go and the climate is already set for her so pretty cool now talking about maintenance and service what do you need to do you don't have to do oil change so that's pretty odd brake fluid health check every two years replace if necessary ac desiccant bag is that what that's i don't know what that word is uh, replace every six years clean and lubricate brake calipers every year or 12,500 miles if in an area where roads are salted during winter and then rotate tires every 10 to 12,000 miles i mean that's actually not so bad that is it and then your basic daily checks like your exterior lights your horn turn signals indicator lights brake you know all that basic stuff and the brakes have those squeaky notification things so that's how you know it's time to switch them out the ac is used to cool the inside of the car but it's also used to cool down the battery so that's important it's not like other cars where if the ac stops working you can still keep driving it you definitely want to get that checked out when it comes to tire maintenance it seems like any other car it'll notify you if you your pressure is low. Oh, I guess the wheels have a lug nut cover that you have to take off if you wanna change the tire. So basically you need to take something skinny like this Allen wrench and poke into this bottom of the T of the Tesla. I guess you press it, right? And then it comes off or something, maybe not. What? I don't get how this works. I think it was supposed to come with a tool in the glove box to kind of remove it. Some weird funky shaped piece of metal. They also say that you can remove it with an Allen wrench, but I can't really figure out how, and I feel like if I keep going, I'm gonna break it. Oh, there we go. It's supposed to just snap back in. There we go. It's not like it's something that I'm gonna need to do since there's no spare tire in this thing. So this is where you fill in windshield wiper fluid. And I guess all the fluid reservoirs go in under here. It just says lift straight up. At first I thought this was the air intake for the engine. I was like, wait a second, there is no engine. So it must be for the AC or heating. You got your 12 volt battery here. There's a fluid reservoir down there and one up here. One of them must be brake fluid and the other one must be for the battery coolant, which apparently you don't have to change the battery coolant for the lifetime of the car. And they say, make sure you put this on, right? Because this is what prevents water from getting into here. So everything just snaps in nicely. Cool. For most of us, we're just gonna be pulling 
on this tab right here for the windshield fluid. Now, if you need to lift the car, do not jack it up with the side railing or definitely not the battery, which a majority of the bottom is. There's four points on the car where it's recommended to do so. Right there, that must be, it feels like it's part of the frame. Yeah, it's pretty easy to spot. Everything else is very plasticky. And look at all that, this whole thing battery so don't put a jack stand near the plastic now notice there's holes in the points so you can get these pucks to make it a little bit easier to lift another thing if you need to get towed make sure that they know that it is a tesla never transport your vehicle with the tires in a position where they can spin doing so can lead to significant damage and overheating so your wheels should never be touching the ground when it's being towed now they will have to use a winch to tow the car onto the flatbed so you have to put it into to transport mode and that will allow the tires to rotate but slowly under three miles per hour for very short distance less than 30 feet exceeding these boundaries can lead to significant damage and overheating that is not covered by warranty and if they're not familiar with towing Teslas then you could go into the manual punch in roadside assistance and instructions for transporters all the info they will need will be right here all right so now we are on the road I'm just driving this like a normal car but see how that icon is right there it's a steering wheel but it's gray that basically means it's recognizing the lanes around me so i can hop into autopilot whoa camera almost tipped over there so i'm gonna double tap this and now i can let go of the wheel and it is gonna drive myself actually i'm supposed to keep my hands here but check it out it's gonna do it on its own at least until it reminds me to touch the wheel again but see how it's flashing blue now it's basically saying apply a little bit of pressure on the steering wheel there we go so now the steering wheel knows i'm there but another cool feature is the navigate on autopilot features all right so let's punch in north hollywood into the gps and now see how it says navigate on autopilot and how that's highlighted so once i get on the freeway i put it on autopilot and it's going to do all my lane changes and exit off the off ramp for me so let's give that a shot so we are gonna get on the freeway wait for that to pop up perfect so now it is on autopilot I'm gonna set my max speed so it now knows where I need to go also it knows which lane I'm supposed to be in so I'm just gonna kind of let it do its thing it's saying it wants to get one more lane over so it's looking it checked the right lane it says it's clear and it moved into it so I'm just chilling just kidding I'm not chilling I have my hands on the steering wheel and I am paying attention because that is what a responsible person does keeping my eyes on the road I mean in this feature it's navigating for you it's driving for you all you have to do is just be ready in case it does something weird to be ready to take over all right so here's our exit coming up I'm not gonna touch anything for a second let's see how it does all right turn on the right turn signal and it's slowing down and we're pulled over whoa that was a little weird okay there you go you see that it kind of did a little bit of swerving but it ended up okay navigate on autopilot ends once you pull off the freeway now we're back on autopilot and remember the few ways to get out of it is touching the brake so if i tap the brake it kicks me out of autopilot so that's good and if i apply a little bit of extra pressure on the steering wheel it also pulls me out of it you can tell by the sound so now i'm just in cruise control but i'm going to put myself back into it and that is one thing to keep in mind is that if you don't touch the steering wheel for a second which you're supposed to always be touching it but if you don't and it asks you to nudge the wheel a little bit you want to put just the right amount of pressure so it knows that you're still there but if you do it too hard just keep in mind that it might pull you out of autopilot because it doesn't take that much pressure on the steering wheel to pull you out of it so you could do a whole long road trip and all you would really need to do is keep your hands on the steering wheel, let the car know that you're still here paying attention, and then just adjust the top speed right here, which you can adjust from right here, and you're pretty much good to go. This is awesome. Now this touchscreen itself has so much, but we'll touch on it a little bit. You have your drive, so right now I'm parked, but there's drive and reverse, which will pop into backup camera. And again, I tap it for park. This right here is the backup camera, if I ever want to see that. This is your battery info right here. So we got 222 miles left on here. And then this is your voice command. Down here, my windshield wipers, again, are on auto, but I can switch it to different speeds here or just completely shut it off like that. And down here, you could actually swipe to see a few things. This is kind of like your odometer and how many miles we have total on the car. We right now, we're only at 209. 
and then we're gonna go to the right here. This is our tire pressure, all looks good. Now here's our navigation. It actually works pretty well. I'm pretty impressed with it. Here's our driver profile. So again, it's on me right now. This is sentry mode, which is basically gonna turn this car into a surveillance camera. So if someone comes up to the car while it's parked, messes with it, then it will record them. That is the dash cam and that red light means it's recording. And in case I get into an accident or something, I wanna hit that and that's gonna save that clip. I can also have it set so if I honk my horn, it saves that clip as well and also that's my lte connection this does come with a one year of free lte so this car is always connected to the internet meaning with your app you can always check on where it is what it's doing and all that the right side some navigation stuff so if i want to zoom out zoom into the map and then this will show me a photo of the area if you prefer that and this is traffic you kind of see what's going on and that is where all the superchargers and actually any charger is so the red one there is a tesla supercharger and it also tells you how many are currently open at that one which is nice this one is almost all occupied but sometimes you could find ones that are a little bit more empty like this one only two is occupied the red ones are superchargers but of course there's the regular chargers that you could use outside there's an adapter that comes with the car now let's say you want to do a road trip like san francisco let's punch that in and basically it's going to recommend superchargers along the way so it says i should probably stop at kettleman city by that point i'm only going to have seven percent battery left and i should charge there for 40 minutes and then i would charge again at san francisco international airport now if you go past the speed limit you're going to discharge faster so something to keep in mind and notice that all the ones within range are bright red but the ones that are out of range become opaque and transparent. Those are out of range with your current battery. They laid it out pretty nicely. So all the stuff that you're frequently accessing is right here. Like if you wanna open the trunk, the hood, the charging port, this is kind of your main menu for stuff with the car. And then we have music. And then inside of here, we have a bunch of bonus features like a web browser. There's also entertainment, all kinds of YouTube, Netflix, arcade, you can play a bunch of games inside of here. So if you're waiting for somebody, you will not get bored. Seat warmers right there, climate, seat warmer for the passenger, and then of course our defrosters. Volumes here, but as the driver, I'm usually just adjusting the volume on the steering wheel. Now going into the car menu, I'm just gonna try to blast through this. This is your basics, like adjusting your mirrors, your steering wheel, you access that all through here. Lights, you got headlights, your interior dome lights. I have everything just set to auto automatic and then auto high beam is that feature I turned on locks we already went over this it knows that I'm driving it with my phone on display mode we have auto but there's also day and night but I have it on auto it switches automatically the screen brightness also on auto then there's the screen cleaning mode which is nice it basically locks up the screen it's going to get a whole bunch of fingerprints so you can wipe it down we got language time format if you want to switch to the 24 hour clock if you want to and then energy display you can switch between the distance so how many miles you can go or you can switch that to just percentage kilometers or miles and temperature celsius or fahrenheit and tire pressure psi or bar driving you can go between chill and sport sport is much more fun and then steering mode we kind of talked about regenerative braking is i leave it on standard because that's how you're supposed to get the best mileage out of this car but if you don't really like how the regenerative braking feels you can drop that to low and make that a little less aggressive there's slip start that they say you can use if you're stuck in snow or mud it's going to turn off traction control but they say always turn it off if you're not stuck autopilot you basically just come on here and just turn everything on your speed limit warnings forward collision warning lane departure avoidance all that stuff that we talked about you can turn it on and off here navigation pretty obvious all the basic things like if you want to avoid ferries avoid tolls also it should reroute you if it saves more than Two minutes is what I have it set to, but you can also set it to five, 10. I think it actually comes by default, either five or 10. So I dropped that down to 
two. Maybe I should even do one minute. I think I'll leave it at two for now. Safety and security. You have a few things like speed limit mode. There's things like Joe mode where basically it reduces the volume of your car's chimes. And basically it reduces the amount of noise in the rear seat. So for Joe's kids. <laughs> yeah, cabin overheat protection. I have that on. Let me go into service. You know, if you need to adjust headlights, towing mode that you might need to set it into. Oh my God, guys, we're almost freaking done. This took all day. I wanna show you another thing though, this is cool. I'm gonna pull up to a spot where we can parallel park. Let's try to parallel park in this spot here. I'm just gonna keep pulling up until a P pulls up. There we go, see that P right there? So I'm gonna hit that and I'm gonna shift into reverse and I'm gonna hit start and ta-da, it's like magic. I'm an expert parallel parker now now this is cool i know this is a feature that's been around in cars for a little while but such an impressive feature look it knows how much space there is in this parking spot and it's kind of scooching forward a little bit i guess it's to make sure that there's enough space for a car behind me it also has these proximity sensors which is pretty cool when i get close to stuff like if i'm going through a drive through it's kind of nice having this tell me how close i am to scraping up against a curb or something like that and then as i get real close to this car in front of us slowly turns red and there you go also check out this web browser here you can browse the web you can go online do some shopping or whatever since this car does have an lte connection i can do that and when you get bored there's random stuff to explore like this game beach buggy it uses your steering wheel and your brake to play and in case you're wondering when you turn the steering wheel the tires do actually turn on the car themselves <laughs> i'm gonna kick some ass oh snap i think i just died i don't like this game anymore i quit and of course the best part about getting the performance version of the model 3 you'll see when you watch the speedometer ready zero two oh i didn't hit 60. I got to 58 and then I stopped. <laughs> so awesome news, just found out one of our dogs have fleas and we are praying that the pet store still open during the quarantine because everything that's non-essential is closed right now. But I'm hoping, huh, is there a line outside of BevMo? <laughs> <laughs> so good news. Petco is open. In the meantime, why don't I show you the app real quick? It's pretty straightforward and gives you all the basic things you might want. So up top is the climate and the frunk and also lock and unlock. Oh snap, did you guys just see that? Was that in frame? That was an accident. I'll stick around and see if there's any sort of conflict. And if there is, I'll be like, I've got footage of it. I feel bad for them though, that whole door. Oof. Do you know how to use the voice command? has voice command <laughs> so you take this right thumb wheel and okay. you press it you could do a bunch of different commands there's a huge list of them open netflix you can open up netflix and youtube while you're parked only once you start driving you can't use these anymore but you can use things like the web browser i think it's pretty cool to be able to google stuff because you know how i'm always wondering random stuff and googling google how to get rid of fleas on a dog <laughs> Yeah. Hey, we just bought that stuff. <laughs> so Googling, you can actually still do while you're driving. I was trying to get clever and I was like, what if I use the web browser and pull up YouTube on the web browser and can I watch a video? Oh. It doesn't work. As okay. soon as you start driving, like your video stops loading. Also, when we look at climate, there's dog mode, which we'll be using a whole lot. And it tells people not to worry because the dog is very comfortable in the <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> and then one more mode is the camp mode. I thought that was cool. So the climate will stay on until the battery reaches 20%. So like I was saying, if you had to sleep in the trunk, then you can turn that on. All right, so let's try this again. So up top, you have your climate. So if you're about to get into a car on a cold day, you can turn that on. And also access to this trunk right here and this lock and unlock. And then you can go into controls. You can flash the lights and honk. Ooh, that was loud. <laughs> you could enter valet mode from your phone. You could also vent the windows, give it a little bit of airflow or close it back up. And then there's the loot box. So everyone with a Tesla gets a referral link. And if you're gonna order a Tesla, you generally wanna order one with a referral link, <clears throat> maybe mine. You basically both get a thousand miles of free supercharger or some other stuff if you do solar. But yeah, if you're gonna order a Tesla, I will conveniently place my referral link right there in the description. So that's pretty much it for the app. 
few last things. There is a track mode. This is just something that you'll only see in the performance model. And you could customize it. So there's your race preset and there's also this drift preset, which completely takes off your stability assist and throws all the power to the rear wheel. So that's freaking awesome. That's probably a ton of fun to drive. This is going to tell you the temperature of your battery, your tires, and also down here, it's going to show you how many G's you're pulling through turns and all that. I cannot wait to test this track mode out someday, somewhere safely. You could also check out your energy consumption, see how efficient your driving habits are. And you could definitely see when we're driving slowly and when we're having too much fun. And then the toy box that you can pull up, that's where the whoopee cushion is. And then there's also more cowbell. So if you're driving on autopilot and you press this down four times, then it activates the rainbow road. And then there's a bunch of stuff like Santa mode. There's this fireplace that just lets you watch a fire with some nice crackling sounds and starts blowing hot air at you, but it's pretty hot. So I'm about to turn this off right now. There's tracks, which is music making software. I guess if you get bored waiting for someone, you can start dabbling and making some music. There's honestly a lot of stuff in here that can keep you occupied for a pretty long time. That's it for this video, but uh, we gotta go take care of the situation. Apparently all the dogs have some fleas now. Are we gonna be quarantined in a house with a bunch of fleas living in it? No, we're I'm working on it. We're killing them all. <laughs> Blankita, she probably brought them in the house.